Okay, so um, I'm Derek White. I'm from uh, University of British Columbia. This is my colleague, um, Pan Luo. Um, and uh, um, we were the ones who, uh, who developed this, this X block. So we've lost our... Okay. So uh, this is the agenda, what we're going to cover in the next uh, little bit. Um, so we're going to talk a bit about the peer instruction can I get the one? Sorry, just a second. Can I see the slide here? That's okay. That's fine. I'll look at this. Fine. Okay. Sorry about that. So we're going to talk about the peer instruction process itself. Um, a little bit about the underlying theory on which it's based. Um, we're going to try to do a live demo here. So we actually want you to participate as a student in the peer instruction process um, in edX. So we'll, we'll uh, show you how to go about that when we get to it. Um, the key features of the peer instruction tool, a little bit about the development process we went through, uh, general experiences and feedback from the users, um, uh, the methodology we are using for an evaluation of the product, which is only just starting, um, and then some roadmap plans we have for development. Okay, so this is how the, 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 how the workflow uh, works. So we said this is a four-step process. You could probably say this is a five-step process. And the first thing that happens is that usually there's some sort of um, presentation of some material, um, although this, yeah, well, that's normally what happens, and, you, and the students are asked to reflect on that, and then they're asked a the question, so that's step one. So they're asked a the question, um, which usually is a multi-choice question. That's how the, the tool is set up at the moment. And they're also asked to provide a rationale for the, for the particular option that they have selected. Uh, the next step, um, they are then presented with other students' um, answers. So the options that the other students have uh, given, as well as the rationales that the students have provided for those answers. Um, the next step, they are then asked to resubmit or to, to think about their answer, to reconsider their answer, um, if they want to, they can make a change to their answer, and then they can write a rationale for, for why they believe that answer is the, the best answer. Um, and then the last step, they just they see um, the uh, instructor's answer. As often, if it's a normally it's a correct answer, so often the, this sort of question is set up so that there is a correct answer. It doesn't have to be, but there often is. But they see the answer that the instructor has provided, as well as the um, the explanation for that answer, um, and then the they see the, the distribution of, um, the, they see two charts, one of which um, shows the students the distributions of answers that were provided the first round uh, in, in step one, as well as the distribution that was uh, in step three as well. So that's how the, the basic process works. So the, um, the underlying theory, this, this pretty closely follows with some exceptions. Um, Eric Mazur's uh, peer instruction uh, methodology. So Eric Mazur is a, is a, a, a professor at Harvard um, and developed this, this methodology many years ago now. Um, and it sort of falls within a broad category of um, uh, interactive engagement strategies to make, uh, to enhance the classroom experience. Um, so it was born out of a reflection um, or recognition that while lectures are really good at some things, they're good at communicating information, um, they're not particularly good at helping students to actually learn that information, to absorb that information and to internalise it. Um, there's some, for those of you who are interested, some really nice little videos uh, on YouTube that Eric has sort of talks about his story of how he came to that realisation, despite the fact that he was getting fantastic um, results from his... Uh, evaluation of his lectures, people are finding them exciting and engaging and actually doing quite well on their exams. Um, nonetheless, he discovered that they weren't necessarily learning the content very well when it came to, well, at least not very well in, in real life context. Um, so the, um, the way this works, uh, typically in a classroom setting, um, is there will be some sort of content presentation, as I said before, or it, if it's a flipped classroom sort of context, it may be that there is some content presentation that happens outside of the classroom. And then students are asked some questions, and these are normally questions designed to, to get at some concept that is difficult. 
that, um, that there are some difficulties of understanding. Um, and then the students are asked to, to vote. Um, often they use a response system, so they use a clicker, and they vote on the, what they think is the right answer. And then before they um, get to see an answer or before the instructor responds, to, or gives an explanation, um, they're then put into groups and told to discuss this. Um, and then for a, for a few minutes and to try to come up with, um, to reason with each other about what's the best answer. Uh, then they get to do that process again, so they, they re-vote. Um, and then it's often the case that the instructor will then show the, the students the distributions and give an explanation. Um, so the, the, there's, this is a well, well, no, uh, this is um, a well established efficacy of the pro of this process. There's lots of research to show that this works really, really well and is effective for supporting learning. Um, but it also it, the reason it works is because uh, it actually engages these higher order uh, cognitive processes. So um, articulation, evaluation, synthesis, synthesis, that sort of um, process. Um, so it's not just the fact that it's the result of, of uh, the influence of the stronger peers, if you like. It actually does work because of the process itself. So I've got a reference to an article there which is really uh, aiming at looking at that. Um, and it has discovered that, in fact, it's not, it's not necessarily the fact that you, you can even, even in groups where um, there is nobody in the group that has the correct answer, the process of people articulating and thinking through the answer supports uh, a, a depth of, of reflection and learning. So uh, this is just a sort of diagrammatic um, uh, process of how this works. Often in class it actually, um, there actually may be three different sort of processes here. The, the middle one here is the primary process, um, but you can see in, in the, the case for, for when there is more than 70% of the class that got, gets it correct. Sometimes what they'll do is they'll skip the whole process and go directly to an explanation. In the case where less than 30% are getting it correct, it may be worth revisiting before you actually go through the process. Um, but this is sort of a classroom context. So, uh, oh, so, this, so that's the sort of background theory of, of the tool. Um, I just want to talk a little bit about why we decided to actually develop this tool. So um, when it, UBC um, became a charter member, we, uh, one of the things we committed to was to do development on the platform. Um, and we wanted to do something that was significant and had value to the community. So um, we sort of reflected on our context first. So UBC has had a long history of transformation of education, particularly in the, um, in the sciences. So we had this, uh, the Carl Wyman, um, education, science education initiative, which is uh, over 10 years old now. It's a multi-year program to transform uh, science education. And um, one of the key features of, of this transformation has been the peer instruction process. So it made sense for us. So over 170 uh, courses have been transformed during the last 10 years. Uh, the other thing we reflected on was the, the MOOC context and the, the challenge of the MOOC context is that you have such a huge number of students, it's, it's impossible for instructors to engage students directly. Um, the other thing is, of course, that it's because the students are all over the world, it's very hard to support synchronous interaction. Um, so um, at the Global Forum in 2014, um, there was a, a working group that was uh, for the uh, uh, instructional design and pedagogy working group that was sort of a, a breakout session and thinking about what sort of pedagogical innovations were possible within the platform. And this particular question, can we take in an example of a pedagogy that we know works really well in a face-to-face -face environment and create it, recreate it in a fully online environment? So that was the sort of the task that they thought about. Um, and so we decided that we'd try to do this online peer uh, in instruction process but rather than uh, creating synchronous groups, which you typically have in a classroom, that we would utilise, uh, do this asynchronously and, and utilise the um, students' answer rationale that they write in as a proxy for that discussion. Okay, so now we're going to actually do a demo. Yeah. Okay, so I would like to invite you to open your laptop or phone. And go to this URL. This is a um, <coughs> script that uh, uh, registers you to the uh, edX instance on 
hosted on UBC. Uh, it's our dev in instance. And uh, it will register you as an anonymous uh, user, so you don't have to put in any information. And they will enroll you to a course that has set up for the um, peer instruction. Um, so I'll leave it up for a little bit more time. And uh, so once you go to that URL, you should be able to see a course and a assignment um, with stock pictures. So hopefully everyone loves doc. Um, so that's a assignment um, for the peer instruction. So you now are logged in as a student. So there is uh, some instructions uh, or the content for the course. Uh, then you can briefly uh, look at them and uh, read them. Then if you go to the bottom of the page, uh, go to assignment one, and go to the bottom of the page, you will be able to see the uh, peer instruction question. <coughs> yeah, so you can just uh, do it. So it's basically <coughs> the process that uh, just, uh, Derek just des described. So first you give your answers and uh, rationale for your answers. So, uh, so your rationale will be uh, recorded and uh, uh, put into a pool so other people may see your rationale if they submit uh, after you. And uh, then you are given uh, a few other people's answer. So we seeded a few um, answers so that you can see. Um, so yeah. And then uh, you are given a chance to uh, revise your answer and rationale. So I would like to bring up the so, so you are all able to, to do it? You can well, see it? Take your time. So this is a graph that uh, will be generated after you submit your final answer. But uh, I would like to see the, uh, give you the idea of the, like how the uh, distribution changes. So right now this is a uh, default one, the one we seeded. Uh, status, and if I refresh, hopefully, yeah, it's working. So it looks like a lot of people are selecting option one of three for their first attempt. And then a lot of people switch to the option two. So once you finish, you should uh, see a similar graph, may not be the same, exact same number. So this graph will uh, move uh, when the students are submitting their answers. So uh, as you can see, there are a lot of people selecting option one, three uh, in their original answer, and then <coughs> switch to option two. Uh, so in this gra graph, the option two is a correct answer. Um, so that's uh, basically the uh, workflow for the student using the peer instruction. So let me go to the next, uh, switch to the slides. So there are some key features uh, in this um, tool. So it's asynchronous, um, two-stage uh, multi-choice question. So as you can see, there are um, a little bit different uh, from the classic uh, environment uh, that was uh, used in the, in the classroom. Uh, we chose asynchronous because um, um, it's running online and uh, it's built for MOOC. So it's a little bit hard for a student to be online at the same time. So there are some uh, trade-off and uh, choice made uh, during the design process. Um, it support multiple algorithms. So the algorithms uh, uh, are used for uh, selecting student question, uh, student answers for 
to be shown to other students. So <coughs> uh, right now we have two algorithms implemented, uh, a random one and a, a simple one. Simple one is just basically selecting random uh, answers from, for each uh, option. Um, we're planning to do additional algorithm, more sophisticated ones that uh, um, may be scoring the student answers and uh, picking the uh, most um, persuasive ones. Uh, or, um, there are uh, lots of things to, uh, can be done in the designing the algorithm. Um, the number of um, uh, so the instructor can set the number of uh, answers. So that's allow the instructor to um, customize the, um, the how many students, uh, how many answers students can see. And uh, it also supports seeding. So the instructor can seed um, uh, answers, instructor typed in answers in the uh, in the question. So. When, for example, force a student come in, if we don't have a seating, uh, they will see nothing. So um, that allows student to see, um, uh, go through the same process for uh, even early um, students. Grading, so we support grading um, in for the grade book, Alex grade book. So um, right now only completion grade. So when student complete the assignment, they will get a, a point. Um, HTML and uh, image uh, input, so instructor can set up uh, image or HTML for their questions and uh, options. So basically, uh, some of the uh, physics professors, they put in the graphs as the options, so students can see which graph is um, uh, describing the, the question or answering the question. Um, uh, statistics. So, uh, as you can see, the, the graph at the end, so that's a um, distribution of the an, uh, answers that students select. So, and uh, also in internationalization support, so that's a feature contributed by, uh, from edX uh, team, so that allow um, different um, uh, students speaking different language uh, seeing different um, uh, text. Uh, also, um, event tracking. So we uh, we are emitting uh, events for uh, learning analytics. So uh, there will be more uh, information covered um, later. And uh, this um, X block is available on edX and uh, Edge. So anyone that are interested in or that <coughs> can use it. And if you're running on your, uh, your own hosted uh, environment, you can also install that Xbox. It's open source. Okay, so since the Wi Fi is working, so I'm going to show some live pictures, uh, uh, live screens for the instructor UI. So this is uh, an instructor interface when um, they're setting up the peer instruction tool. So, so they can set problem waiting. Uh, question text can be uh, HTML. And it can, they can add uh, images and uh, image, different image positions and uh, set up the character limitation of the uh, answers. And uh, those are the options that uh, instructor can set up and uh, specify correct answers and uh, a rationale or a feedback uh, that uh, to be given to the student at the end so that the student can see why this answer is correct. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so this is the algorithm that uh, uh, I was talking about. <coughs> and uh, you can also set how many uh, answers that student will see on the second step. 
and this part is a seeding, so your uh, instructor can uh, set a few seeds that just start up the process. So that's a <coughs> that's a uh, instructor interface. Uh, okay, let's go back so we can skip those. And this is a <coughs> sorry, excuse me, uh, events where <coughs> where you meeting right now. <coughs> We're only emitting like three events. Um, once when the question is accessed, <coughs> um, the second and third one are the um, <coughs> when students submit their answers. So one for original, one for um, uh, revised. <coughs> so this is an example of the events. Um, so I highlight a few points like in red at the uh, people might be interested. So the first one is a name, so that's a type of the events, so uh, what kind of action student did. Um, the rest, uh, the second one, the third one are answer and rationale, so the which answer student select and the, the full text of the rationale student put in. Um, so that's uh, um, give the um, researchers that uh, ability to research the student behavior and uh, um, doing all kind of um, interesting things. Yeah, so because of time, we'll skip the development process and uh, I'll hand it back to Derek. Okay, so I want to talk a little bit about um, some of the feedback we've had about the use of the tool. So when we originally did the pitch for this presentation, we expected to be able to uh, have some uh, some data analysis of, of how the, the system had been used, but for various reasons we don't actually have anything substantial yet. Um, so, some, so what I'm talking about initially is, is really more anecdotal. Um, so when we, when we ask um, instructors um, about the use of the tools, um, they, they tell us they like it. Um, they tell us that um, uh, the students, um, in terms of the students' feedback, that they like it, that um, that it certainly is uh, causing a greater degree of um, time on task. Um, but we haven't really um, done analysis yet about you know the the effectiveness of of the um, from a data perspective. However, um, we have done a number of usability studies as we've developed the tool. And as part of the usability studies, we've been collecting some qualitative feedback from students about um, their experience of using that tool as we've taken them through the usability process. Um, so here's just a few things that, to highlight. Thanks. Um, we'll go very fast now. So uh, did, the, did the students find it helpful? Um, the majority said they did find it helpful. That's to see this other students' answers. Um, did they like the before and after charts? Were they useful? Um, so again, the majority of students felt that they were useful. Um, did it actually affect, the, did it change the result? Did they make some differences? So in area, about less than 50% are actually changing their answer. Um, but, um, but still, you know, you're looking at, you know, it's 40 something percent there that are actually said that they changed on the basis of have, having a, um, seen other students' answers or at least that they felt more confident about their own answer. So I'm going to skip these. This is some student quotes about what they found effective about the tool. Um, so very quickly, um, we are, so while we could, this is just anecdotal primarily, we've shown you right now, but we are um, starting the evaluation process, um, actually looking not only at the peer instruction tool, but also at another tool called Delight or Daylight, however you say that, um, which is a very similar sort of uh, um, asynchronous peer instruction tool, although it's an LTI one, it's a slightly different process. Um, so there is some work with MIT, um, edX, Harvard and UBC are going to go through a, a process of evaluation which we expect to sort of, ha um, sort of have some results by the end of the year. Um, again, really quickly, so these are the sorts of things we're expecting to, to look at. Uh, measure of impact, um, does it affect the number of time on, time on pages, uh, how often do students switch, um, positive switching to the correct answer, negative switching away from the correct answer. Um, the quality of the answers, doing some analysis of the rationale pieces themselves. Uh, impact on persistence and, and other parts of the course. Does it make a difference in the way that they interact in other parts of the course, time on task? Look at the uh, measure on, on learning. Can we correlate it to some sort of performance uh, metrics um, in terms of grades or some other aspect within the course? Uh, 
perceptions, the students' perceptions of the value of the tool and their own their sense of competence they're gaining from using the tool. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and then some design features, you know, what works well and what, um, in terms of the, the questions that are asked. I'm just gonna, is there anything else I need to follow? Uh, well, just really quickly, we should cover some rope. Well, these, these are things we're, that are coming soon. So we are doing grading. Can I, I'll talk to this really quickly. So we are doing grading for the correct answer as well. Um, additional algorithms. Um, so ability for students to ask for additional student answers. So being able to iterate through multiple of these processes, um, flagging inappropriate answers, um, enhancing the event emitting, uh, and uh, exploring the option of perhaps actually having a synchronous integration as well. So uh, that's the development team, and I'll leave that last slide. There's some. So, any questions? Uh, lunch was the part until 12 15, so people are willing to stick around over till past 12 10, and we have about uh, eight minutes for questions. But we are, as I said, we are really interested in talking to you if you're interested in using the tool or you want to be part of the evaluation project or, or you want to make some suggestions for changes as well. So, yes. actually, oh, hey, look, there's a mic. Can't tell. Um, can you talk a little bit about what kind of timeline you actually use for the asynchronous, like, is it 24 hours? Is it a week? Like, what, what does the actual process look like when you're running it in a course? You know, it, it really depends. It depends on what, um, I mean, the nature of the course. So one of the courses we're running is actually a, um, a self-paced course. And because we were able to seed the question, seed the student answers, um, there's no, no need for students to all be doing it within a certain period of time, right? So, I mean, the, the, the key piece that, that's kind of missing from the typical peer instruction process is this oversight of an instructor who's actually looking at, at the, um, the results and saying, I need to do some more explanation here, or, um, or saying, you know, you know as, as I showed before, sometimes in the class they actually don't go through the whole process if it's not needed. So, um, so the... Having it more time bound will, will allow a greater ability to sort of give that oversight and then interact from an instructor perspective. Um, but obviously we're trying to also deal with the MOOC world where that's a lot harder to deal with. And so the evaluation process will, will hopefully help us to see, um, you know, how effective this is um, without those additional pieces in place. Yep. Tammy, excuse me as a MOOC world, but you're going to have a lot of answers on how to pick which one to show. And it seems like you're rewarding somebody who's been very effective at getting people to switch to the wrong answer, which is a variable, but very valuable one to show often, right? Because it makes people think more. Because mm. when they when they get convinced to the wrong answer, and then also to reward people for getting the things that actually get people to switch to the right answer, you know, because you should be able to, if you do your algorithm right, you know, be able to kind of float those and score how, how yep. people's answers affected people's answers. Yep. That's a comment, right? <laughs> I mean, what, one of the things we thought about was, and, and how do you actually, one of the reasons we've been cautious about going around the grading piece is that because the effectiveness of, the, the argument is the effectiveness of the process itself is just the participation, not necessarily getting the right answer, uh, we've been a bit cautious about actually implementing a grading that grades on the right answer. But, but nonetheless, there is that pressure to do so. So that's why we're, we're also doing that. Great. Um, but uh, yeah, to, to your point, you know, this I think is a really great option to have as a final process that you don't get to have in the classroom, except in, in sort of uh, with it, without any formalism, is having people showing people a few samples of of explanations of the right answers and having them give a let's give you. We know the research says that novices understand novice pieces yep. better than they do in, in structured speech. So I think that would help you seed trying to decide what kind of things to show in there, et cetera. I would encourage you to hold hold the line on not giving grades for, for correctness because I mean we've done the research and shown that's a great way to make sure instructors are wrong. Right. Okay. Okay. Well it'll only be an option anyhow. But well, so know, but don't yeah. have to be disastrous. <laughs> we do bad stuff all the time. Yeah. Keep it from good. Okay. Are the all the answer for instructor and students uh, anonymous? Uh yes. 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 I mean, I mean the the um, the event emitting 
um, will give you information about who the student is as well, right? So, so from an instructor who's actually got the, the data download, they, they can actually figure that out, but, but it's anonymous for the students, yes. We, we have, and we, we had that on, on our list as well. And I know that the, the other tool we mentioned, the Delight tool, I mean, that's one of the things that you actually do is you actually vote on the, the rationale you think is the best. So it's not just about the answer. So we have thought about that as well. We haven't, haven't really gone beyond thinking about it, but that's a good idea. Yes, 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 we have. In fact, um, in, the, in the evaluation process, we're thinking of actually having those two different scenarios. The one which is this classic process where it is a right answer, and another where there isn't a right answer. And it's just really about exploring options. Um, we probably, I just look, yes, even if we're going through the slides today, we, we, we need to change some of the wording, um, in because it says correct answer at the moment. But there's no reason why it, it doesn't have to be a correct answer. It just could be, in fact, you don't necessarily have to have an instructor feedback, but you could, but, or you could have an instructor feedback that's just a general one without actually saying this is the correct answer. Yeah, two questions. Um, one, I think you mentioned that you have a limit. At the moment it is, yep. But it, Uh, you can create multiple X block on the one page, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 So. But you have to. Okay. Yeah, but so what you're saying is to is them have multiple questions before they start to see the next stage. Right. 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 Okay. right. Before they start, you know, collecting. Yeah. We, we haven't, and one of the things we have looked at is, is not just having a multi-choice option, but actually supporting, a, you know, a, there's, you select all that, that apply uh, or something like that. It, it does make it significantly more complex in, in how you do the next stages, but we have explored that as an option as well. But, but um, specifically to your point, no, we haven't um, thought about that yet, but, you know, that's um, interesting. Well, I'm not sure. I mean, in terms of you know, when you see the the distribution at the end. So, so can can you yeah, can you ex okay, explain what you mean there? Yeah. For each person. Yes. But if you could have a consensus of every, you know, the whole group saying, okay, the correct answer is this, and then the, the as a group, as a knowledgeable group, if they got the correct answer. Oh. So, so really doing it as a group exercise. So the group itself is doing the, um, I mean, yeah. I'm not sure how to model it uh, online, but I, I see what you're, you're, you're getting at. Um, but yes, yeah. It's it's rather rather than sort of saying let's vote on it and then the 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 the, 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 big, the best of that vote you know eighty percent say this or it's a consensus process yeah 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 it's another type of right yeah well we'll have a think about that thank you thank very you. much.